Hello everyone, welcome back to Studio Technologies. In the first part of the series, we lay out the specifications for the robot arm and we finish the upper joints. This time we'll be finishing up the mechanical design as well as some of the electronics. If you missed the last video, be sure to click the card in the top right to catch up on everything you've missed so far. Before we start working on the lower joints, we need to take a look at the new design for the upper joints that I mentioned in the previous video. I wasn't a huge fan of the aesthetic design of the joints, so I spent some extra time between videos to redo the design entirely while keeping things functionally the same. The new design not only looks much better, but also fits well with the rest of the robust design. With that completed, I spent the rest of the time finalizing the remaining joints and printing the necessary parts. Joint 3 was designed with a two-stage power transmission system that will allow it to output the nearly 14 newton meters of torque required to lift the upper joints in a 1 kilogram payload. This design took the longest to complete, but it was certainly necessary since Joint 2 uses the same drive system. Working out the kinks now allowed me to quickly finish Joint 2 later on. This drive system uses a NEMA 23 stepper motor with a 12 tooth 5 mm pitch HTD pulley with a timing belt that turns a 3D printed 48 tooth pulley. The 3D printed pulley is attached to a quarter inch shaft with a flange coupling. This transfers the torque from the first gear train through the shaft to another 12 tooth pulley with another timing belt to the final 3D printed 60 tooth output gear attached to the upper limb. This results in a total gear ratio of 20 to 1. The upper limb is sandwiched between two printed pieces, each with its own ball bearing to keep everything in place. One panel has a 10mm hole to allow the motor cables for joint 4 to be passed through. The side of the lower limb also has the same sized hole for the motor cables of joint 3 to pass through. For the larger timing belt, I added a space for two belt tensioners by adding a couple of M4 size slots for an M4 bolt and a few bearings. Adjusting the tension is important so we don't miss any steps during operation. Midway through printing the parts for this joint, however, my 3D printer stopped working. Ah! The first layer started to look terrible and eventually I couldn't get any of the prints to stick at all. Apparently there's a common issue with early Mark 3S's where the fan trial for the extruder melts and causes heat to be pushed towards the Pinda Pro mount causing it to become slanted and skewing the bed leveling. It took me a few hours to get it working well enough to print the updated extruder parts out of PET-G and another hour just to replace them. But once that was fixed, I was able to finish up Joint 3 and move on with the design. Joint 2 uses the same power transmission system as Joint 3, except here we have a much larger NEMA 23 stepper motor. I picked this larger motor for this joint since it needs to move the entire arm plus the 1 kilogram payload. It has a holding torque of 3 newton meters compared to the other NEMA 23's holding torque of only 1.26 newton meters. The higher torque plus a total gear ratio of 15 to 1 is more than enough to support the weight of the arm. The belts here are also tensioned in the same way as the belts for Joint 3. Joint 1 took a lot of design work to get right since it needed to serve as the base for the entire robot. It not only has to support the weight of the arm itself, but also a potential 1 kilogram payload, not to mention it has to do all of this while rotating freely. Initially I was going to use one of those large Lazy Susan bearings, but the engineer in me really wanted to design something a little bit more robust and in line with what you might see in commercial robot arms. All of my research pointed me towards thrust bearings. These bearings are made to handle large axial loads, loads that are parallel to the shaft as opposed to ball bearings which handle radial loads, loads that are perpendicular to the shaft. To allow my robot to rotate freely and handle any reasonable loads applied to it, I designed a base that uses a combination of the two bearings. The thrust bearing allows the robot to rotate freely while supporting its weight, and the two radial bearings help keep the arm aligned to the base while also handling any radial loads. The top plate of this rotating base is a large 3D printed 126 tooth pulley. The robot is attached securely to the top of the pulley with M4 bolts. To drive this joint, we have another NEMA 23 stepper motor, the same motor found in joint 3, and an 18 tooth pulley with a large timing belt. Here, the gear ratio is 7 to 1.
Overall, this entire robot took a total of 134 hours of print time. That's almost six full days of printing. It used up five rolls of PLA filament, and that included several failed and flawed prints. Now that's a lot of damage! Now that the mechanical design is complete, we need to start working on the electronics. First up, I needed to extend all of the wires from the stepper motor so that they can safely reach the electronics without getting tangled up. While doing this, I also mounted the arm onto a piece of plywood to serve as a stable platform that can be clamped to the table to secure the arm if needed. It also gives me space to mount the motor for joint one. And finally, I added in an emergency stop button in case I need to cut power from the arm for any reason. As of right now, I only have a single stepper motor driver, so each joint can only be operated one at a time. In a later video, I'll purchase more drivers to set up a proper control system for the arm. For now though, let's test out each of the joints. So here we have joint one. Right. Joint two. Joint three. Joint four. Joint five. Joint six. And there we have it. The mechanical design for the arm is finally complete. I'm very happy with how the robot turned out. It looks great and there are no issues with it. Sorta. You may have noticed when I tested joint 3 that the gear slipped. I believe that it's because I didn't tighten the set screw completely on the 3D printed pulley, so I'll have to work on fixing that for next time. There's also the loud noises and vibrations of the NEMA 23 stepper motors during operation. This is because the motor driver isn't outputting the necessary current for each motor. This will hopefully be resolved when I purchase the rest of the drivers. In the next video, I'll be fixing those issues and working on the main control system, so keep an eye out for that.
If you have any questions or comments about the project so far, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend and be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications for when the next video drops. Thanks for watching.